Okay, we're going to look at the different methods of heat transfer. In this first video, I'm going to look at conduction. I've got an aluminium strip and attached to this strip at different distances are nails and they're attached on with some wax. I'm going to put the one end of the aluminium strip under the Bunsen burner flame and we're going to see what's going to happen to the nails. So as I heat the aluminium strip, energy is transferred by conduction along. And you may be able to see that the tacks are falling off as the wax melts. Think about why this may be happening. Why does the tack at that end fall off before the tacks further down this way? In terms of the particles inside the solid, they are packed very closely together. So as one gains more thermal energy, it will vibrate more. It will pass on that thermal energy to the next atom and the next atom and the next atom, almost in like a game of tag or Chinese whispers. This conduction passes thermal energy along the length of the solid, and that melted the wax further and further along and the tacks dropped off pretty much in order. So this is a nice visual demonstration of thermal energy transfer by conduction, and it happens in solid materials. Some solid materials are better thermal conductors than others. Metals tend to be good thermal conductors because the particles are in nice, neat lattice structures, whereas non-metals such as uh, wool or Polystyrene are poor thermal conductors because they don't have that neat arrangement and instead they are good thermal insulators. In this video we're going to look at a second method of heat transfer called convection. Now convection occurs in fluids, so in liquids and gases. What I've got here is I've got a beaker of water I'm going to apply thermal energy to one side of the beaker, like so. But convection currents aren't particularly easy to see just uh, in this water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of drops of potassium permanganate, which is a purple colour, to that side. And hopefully you can see that on the side where I'm applying thermal energy, the water and the potassium permanganate rises on this side. And on the other side, where the thermal energy is lower, the water and the potassium permanganate fall. So we get this circular motion of a fluid gaining thermal energy and rising and then losing thermal energy and falling. And this circular motion is known as a convection current and convection is a method of thermal energy transfer that occurs in fluids. Why does this happen? Well, if you think of the particles in a fluid, as they gain thermal energy, the spaces between them expand. So the volume that they take up expands. Because the mass stays the same, but the volume has expanded, their density decreases as density and volume are inversely proportional. Hotter objects with lower density will rise above cooler objects with higher density. When they reach uh, a cooler area, they will then fall as a result. So we get this circular pattern. But this can also be really effectively seen 
um, in a quite striking way with something called a uh, smoke chimney. Over here I've got two glass chimneys and under one side I've put a candle in this sealed box. So the air around this candle uh, is going to have thermal energy transferred to it, it's going to heat up and therefore expand and rise. On the other side it must be drawing in cool air uh, to supply the candle and create a convection current of hot air rising this way and cooler air being drawn in the other way. Once again it's not that easy to see but I can do something quite striking to show you that. I have a special type of match here called a smoke match and you can think of it as like a mini flare if you will. And basically they just generate a lot of smoke but they're quite hard to uh, light so we'll see how well that goes. So as soon as I place the smoke into this chimney it gets quite quickly drawn downwards rather than upwards because of the convection currents. So this is all caused by the hot air this side rising and drawing cool air around and creating a convection current. This happens in every fluid that you can think of, including the air within your house. Now, the third type of energy transfer by heating is through radiation. Now, this is energy that's transferred as a wave, as a part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and it's most pronounced in the infrared part of the spectrum. This doesn't need particles to transmit the energy or transfer the energy, so radiation can occur through a vacuum. That's a really important point because without radiation we would have none of the energy or none of the life on Earth because none of the sun's heat nor light would reach us. I've got here an infrared sensor and it's detecting the infrared radiation in the room and you may be able to see on the laptop there that as I move this around the room the amount of infrared radiation being detected by the sensor changes. And I've also got behind me a space heater that's giving off really quite a lot of infrared radiation and it's keeping me nice and warm. Watch what happens as I point the infrared sensor at the heater. Can you see as I move it closer the amount of infrared radiation being detected should be increasing dramatically. In fact the closer you get the more intense the radiation is at that point. And you know this because if you put your hand near there, you would feel the effects really quite significantly. And basically, they just generate a lot of smoke, but they're quite hard to uh, light. So we'll see how well that goes. See what I mean? And you know this because if you put your hand near there, you would feel the effects really quite significantly. And if you stood in front of it and rotated, you could pretend to be 